Hey everyone, I'm Jay, and today we're going to take uh, a short look at the initial setup of a website using Dreamweaver and GitHub Pages. Uh, so I have some files here already, but I'm going to go over to my GitHub repository. Uh, so I've created a repository online. I have added a few files, but if you've created a new one, it probably doesn't have any files yet. You may have a readme, or you may not. Okay. Um, once we have created this, though, uh, we don't need to touch it on github.com any longer, not for our purposes. Okay. I will be using the GitHub desktop uh, app. Okay. Uh, so once you've got the Git, GitHub desktop app uh, and you've associated an account with it already, okay, what we're going to do is, I, because I have the repository created on GitHub already, I can click the Add button, click Clone a Repository. It exists already. I'm going to make a local clone, okay, uh, and actually get to choose from repositories that already exist. Right? So I'm going to choose my Hello World repository. This is the one I'm using today. Choose my folder for it. Okay. Uh, and in my folder structure, what I like to do is I have the folder, uh, a parent folder, and then the actual folder that is the repository. So there's an extra level of directories there. And the reason for that is, as you'll see, when you turn on a GitHub pages, when you enable GitHub pages, um, it gives you that extra directory in the URL. So it's going to be whatever your username is, dot github dot io slash whatever the repository name is and so that is a directory at the end and so i'm going to back feed or i'm going to add one extra parent directory onto that in my folder structure that way when i put it into dreamweaver i have that extra folder right i have that extra directory and then because dreamweaver is going to handle a lot of our our url link structure for us and if our actual folders and directories on our local hard drive don't match the URLs that exist out on the GitHub Pages server, uh, then things aren't going to work right. So I add that extra folder to make sure that they work. And I put it, put the whole thing on the outside of it. So I select the folder where it is. Oh. This folder actually has stuff in it already, so I can just delete it. Okay. All right, now I'll try again. Choose my folder so I have, I just call it Pages Hello World because it's going to be a Pages website and it's called Hello World. So select the empty folder and press clone going to download the fresh copy from GitHub, which me, I have folders, uh, files and folders on there because I have already been using this a little bit. Uh, you may not have them. If it's a brand new repository, you're not going to have anything in there. Uh, but once you do, it's going to load all those. And if I click down here, you'll see that it did reload all those fresh copy. Okay. So I have my GitHub desktop app running it's connected to my hello world repository and let's come over to dreamweaver um some of you this may be your first look at dreamweaver so i have a site set up and i'm just going to go over uh what i did to set that up i did not do a really big and complicated setup in dreamweaver uh because we're using github desktop we're using github pages I don't want to overcomplicate things. We're already using a couple different tools already. Uh, so from here, we go to site at the top and manage sites. So my Hello World site, I'm just going to double click that and show you what I have in here. So I've named it Hello World because it's a Hello World site. And the local site folder 
is the next option right here, the location that I've selected. This is that parent directory that I talked about. So it's pages, hello world for me, you can call it whatever you like, but my hello world repository, so that the files are actually down here. I'm gonna back up one level and select that as the, the base location for the website. And once again, the reason for that is because the GitHub pages is going to give you that URL. It's going to be your username dot github dot io. That's the that's the top domain. But then it's also going to have slash repository name. And my repository is called Hello World. So I'm going to have slash Hello World, which means that every file in my website is in the Hello World directory. And so I have made another directory on top of that. Put the Hello World in there. And that way, Dreamweaver and GitHub can be all on the same page. They're going to communicate. But, well, they're not actually going to communicate with each other, but they are going to communicate the same as far as all the links. So as I'm creating links in my website, uh, if I go to the home directory of my website, the home directory is inside the Hello World folder. So I'm going to select Pages, the parent folder, select that and this there's a lot of settings available on Dreamweaver this is all I'm setting we could set up some servers okay we can set up a testing server we can set up a remote server and we can automatically FTP use a file transfer protocol we can automatically upload our pages to that uh, if I was using a more traditional server I would do that uh, we can set up CSS preprocessors, we can do a lot of advanced settings. Um, cloaking is something that I do like to do. I like to cloak. And what cloaking is in Dreamweaver is it's just going to basically ignore certain files. So the files that I like to ignore are, for example, the GitHub files. I'm going to want to ignore those. Um, although it looks like they're already ignoring them. So I'm not even going to bother setting that. Okay. I'm not going to set any of that other information. I could associate this with the Git repository. Dreamweaver does have the ability of using Git natively, and I wouldn't have to use the GitHub desktop app. However, I'm very comfortable with the GitHub desktop app. I like it. It works good. I don't have any issues with it, and I prefer that over using Git on Dreamweaver. So the only thing I'm setting here is the name and the directory location or the local site folder getting save. And I didn't change anything, but if I did, Dreamweaver is going to rebuild the cache every time. Uh, that's just some internal Dreamweaver stuff. It's totally fine. It's going to rebuild it. No big deal. So I click done. And I have my files over here. Your workspace in Dreamweaver is probably going to look a little different than mine when you first get started. That's okay. You can rearrange it however you like, right? whatever is comfortable for you. Uh, what I like to do and what I have been doing for years is I always have the file navigator on the right-hand side. I also have my CSS designer, which we will use extensively. Uh, in the future. Um, I don't worry too much about this stuff at the bottom. Uh, and then on the left side is, it's changed on me recently. I haven't actually been using Dreamweaver lately. And so there's been an update, uh, but we're gonna use our insert as well in the future. And so let's just open up a file by double clicking on it. And you'll see it on the top side, I have a preview of what that's going to look like. And then on the bottom panel, uh, I have actually the code for that. So I like to develop this way. I am a coder at heart. I'm not a designer at heart. So if you are a designer, you may want to choose the design view or potentially the live view. When we are doing design stuff, I'll be going back and forth between design view and live view. All right. It does get a little bit confusing sometimes because 
some things that you do, you're going to have to be in design view. And sometimes you're going to have to be in the live view in order to get things to do exactly what you want. Confuses me sometimes because I forget which one I need to be in. Uh, but if you're using Dreamweaver every day, you'll get used to it really quick. Um, if you are a coder like me, you may just be building in your code view most of the time. Uh, but I do like to use the split view. Sometimes the split view with the live view so that I can see what's going on uh, as I'm typing. Alternatively, you could open up these files in your browser directly by just kind of double clicking them and then you could type in some code or do some design changes using the CSS designer or the insert um, and then you can refresh it in your browser. I highly recommend opening the files in your browser, either Chrome or Firefox. My preference is Firefox. I don't know, talk about why later, um, but I highly recommend opening it in your browser and the reason is Dreamweaver's preview is, it is what it is. It is not the same exactly as your browser. So open up in your browser and you will see exactly how it's going to look like to other people. And other people are not going to open up your page in Dreamweaver and they're going to open it up in your browser and you should too. All right, I think I've covered, yeah, that's all for this video. Uh, and I'll have more coming up soon. Thanks.